Hello, Anera Nation. My name is Keely Kent, and I'm the Vice President of Compliance and Clinical Services for Continuum Therapy Partners. I am happy to join you this morning to talk about July and what has happened, right? The month of summer camps, the month of summer vacations, and the month of physician fee schedule proposed rules. Yay! So we did get from CMS the um, 2025 payment policies under the physician fee schedule proposed rule. It will officially be published on July 31st in the Federal Register. Um, a key thing to know, we have until September 9th to make comments. So let's kind of dive into it. Just a quick overview of what is on that proposed rule. We're going to talk about the conversion factor. We're going to talk about assistant supervision in private practice, certification of a therapy plan of care, telehealth, caregiver codes, uh, misvalued codes, and MIPS. So let's start off a little bit different than normal for a proposed rule. Let's start off with some great news. Um, one of the proposed aspects is going to be for supervision in private practice. What does that mean? This is a huge advocacy win for us. After a few years of advocating for the Empower Act, um, comments to CMS in support of this change, we've finally gotten a win for our efforts. So woo, we're going to take that win and run with it. Um, this allows for our certified occupational therapy assistants, physical therapy assistants, to provide care with general supervision, which is really exciting. So what does that mean for us? We want to comment and tell them, thank you. Yes, keep this. This is a big win for us. This will provide greater support in rural areas and our underserved communities. This allows for our great clinicians to do what we know they can do. So big win for us from the proposed rule. Some other things that happen in the proposed rule that you know could be a win for us is certification of a therapy plan of care. What does that mean? They are going to include OT, make sure that that's really specific in there. But also, if you have a signed and dated order from a physician and evidence that that plan of care was transmitted to the physician, that should suffice to demonstrate the certification. So excellent news. They are asking for comments in that section. You know, they kind of ask for comments about um, a 90 day calendar time just know that this does not impact the 90 day cert requirement. So we do want to give them comments, right? They're saying, hey, guys, you're in the industry. This is your profession, your specialty. What kind of comments do you have about a 90 day calendar time? Telehealth, not as exciting as the other stuff. So for telehealth, um, while the codes would remain effective for telehealth after 1231 of 2024, our therapist would not be eligible to bill for the telehealth. So we can provide the services, but we just can't reimburse for it. We didn't see anything in the proposed rule that would allow for us. So again, talk to your representatives. We are going to have to advocate for this. Ugh, let's dive into the ugly stuff, right? I feel like we say this every year and here we are again in the proposed rule, the conversion factor. Yet again, we are facing a cut. Let me kind of give you exactly what it is. The proposed net decrease in the conversion factor is about 2.8%, which includes the expiration of a 2.93% that Congress had passed earlier this year. The other bad news is the PAYGO is also set to expire, which would be an additional decrease of 4% effective January 1st of 2025. Again, what does this mean? We have to comment. We have to talk to our representatives. We have to tell them that we cannot withstand more pay cuts, right? Maybe we need a revamp in the physician fee schedule. Absolutely. But for right now, we just can't withstand more cuts. So we have to talk to our representatives. We have to be advocates for it. The other thing that they put into the proposed rule was caregiver codes, making things more specific, explaining um, that the consent could be a certain way, um, and then making sure that you know caregiver codes are out there. Misvalued codes, they talked about this prior, um, and they, there are several codes on there that really impact us. 97110, 97112, 97530, 97535, 97116, so Therax, Neuroread, Therapeutic Activity, Gate, ADLs, and what they said is that, you know, they're still kind of looking at this. They are kind of promoting this. There's really no update regarding the 19 codes. The exact words, they're proposing the direct practice expense inputs as recommended by the HCPAC for all 19 codes. So that can be good news, right? So they're looking at them and make sure that if we have misvalued codes, that maybe we could get paid the way that we should get paid for some of them. 
MIPS, there are some, several updates for MIPS. So they are looking at maintaining the performance threshold at 75 points for the 2025 MIPS, but they're also looking for some additions for the speech language pathology specialty set. So a couple more measures for speech as well as some significant, you know, kind of changes for the MIPS quality program overall, looking at falls, plan of care, elder maltreatment, uh, functional outcomes assessment, dementia, cognitive assessment, I'm reading my list here, um, dementia safety concerns for screening and follow-up, dementia education, rehab therapy referral for patients with Parkinson's disease. So lots of kind of things coming up with MIPS. I think for me, one of the most important things when we look at this physician piece schedule is thinking about what can we do and where are our advocacy points? So for me, the most important points that we want to make is appreciate the good stuff, right? We want to thank our represent representatives. We want to thank everybody that did give us the supervision change, the proposed change for that. We want to make sure they know what a change that will make and how we can provide great care for our residents with that. We also need to talk about the cuts. We have to tell them, you know, we have to put them in our shoes and say, look at the cuts we've faced over the last several years. We can't continue to work like this and you continue to give us cuts. We need to make a change. We need to advocate for telehealth. We all know it's been a, a blessing to be able to use that for our patients. Our patients love it. Our outcomes are still there. So we want to talk about why we want to be able to continue to use that after the end of the year. We want to thank you for the updates for the CTS codes and make sure that they know all the things we appreciate there. Now is your time. CMS has to read every comment that we put out there. So let's make some comments. We want as many comments as we can out there so that they know how we're feeling and we kind of put them in our shoes. NARA is the opportunity for our members to easily prepare and submit comments. So we are excited to do that. Thanks for all you do. Proud to be a NARA member and look forward to seeing all the great things that come after we make our comments.